हेलो 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 कैन यू हेयर मी हेलो हेलो कैन यू हेयर मी ओके सो आई गेस ओके सो यू कैन हेयर मी जस्ट गिव मी मिनिट yes uh, just give me just give me one minute please okay so uh let's start mm. so hi i am anirban wajumdar um, i am now studying in uh, so i am now doing a phd in computer science theoretical computer science in uh, ens paris sacle it's in france uh, my background so i was a student at jinta before um, before Uh, like at class eleven, twelve, and then uh, I joined CMI. So I uh, did my bachelor's from CMI. I think uh, all of you know about CMI. Uh, and then I also did my master's from CMI in computer science. Um, then I uh, joined uh, PhD uh, here in ENS Paris Sackler. Um, so uh, the topic of my research is. Uh, mostly theoretical computer science it's a, it's an area called automata theory uh, i do not know uh, uh, what is the audience uh, but yeah i will 
so this will be a, a brief uh, introduction to uh, automata theory and uh, why uh, well it is quite interesting in computer science but uh, well again in mostly theoretical computer science uh, but it's used in uh, daily life and uh, it's uh, well connected with uh, mathematics and uh, i'll uh, i'll give a brief introduction uh, about that in this talk uh, so this will be a research track so that was the plan uh, it will be a, probably a research track um, and yeah um, so i'll uh, check the comments uh, now and then uh, i cannot really see the comments um, in the same at the same time because i do not have two devices sadly my mobile is not working for some reason so um, yeah uh, I'll start now. Uh, so if you have any question, you can post it. I'll uh, check the comments now and then. I'll try to be very uh, clear. Well, not very clear. I'll try to be clear, uh, but very brief and very big, vague. So if you don't understand something, uh, don't get disappointed, but you can ask questions. I'll try to be very, uh, I'll try to answer them. And uh, if I know, uh, since I mean, uh, Mathematics is not really my field, so I'll try. Okay, so uh, first, uh, why do we need automatons? Um, let me first um, try to give some motivating examples. Uh, well, yeah. Um, so for example, uh, so in computer programs, so we write programs, right? Uh, in Python, C, or whatever language you consider, we write programs. So in the background, uh, there is actually a uh, concept of automata theory. Well, not exactly automata theory, but close to automata theory, which we do not see as programmers. Um, then how the computers work. For example, if you give some input to the computers, uh, computers are not human. So it has to do something in the background. So there also uh, automata theory comes into picture. Uh, then, for example, verifying systems. Uh, what, do you, what do I mean by verifying systems? Uh, for example, uh, you are given a system, for example, um, an ATM machine, and you want to verify it's working properly. For example, if you want to say, well, I want to withdraw some money, then it actually withdraws some money. If you want to check uh, just the balance, then it will uh, check the, just the balance. So this is called correctness of systems or verifying the systems if it's correct um aircrafts and traffic signals so these are some examples uh, of verifying systems where automata is used in background and then verifying ml uh, ml for machine learning mm, so for example in self driving cars so machine learning is nothing but well i do not i am not an expert in machine learning but uh, machine learning is like learning a machine so you are given so you uh, collect some input from environment and uh, you learn a machine so that's how uh, people are trying to learn self-driving cars but after the car is built you need to verify whether it is uh, verifying some it is uh, satisfying some properties so that also comes under uh, verification systems verification uh, finally uh, synthesis so um, yeah of course it's too much details but synthesis is like uh, you have give, you are given some properties of a system you want to build the system from scratch just from the properties so yeah and there also the concept of uh, automata theory comes into picture so everyone uh, so yeah is everyone with me uh, whoever is online Um, is everyone with me? Is anyone with me? Okay, okay, thanks. Uh, okay, 
so what is automata um, let me uh, try to define it uh, in a non rigorous way of course i'm not going into details so suppose uh, consider the consider a vending machine and we want to we want to model the behavior of a vending machine how can we do that so initially vending machine is doing nothing so that's in that's idle uh, now user user can insert a coin uh, then the vending machine will uh, change its state so these are called states uh, so we will come to later come to this later so now the vending machine will uh, go to a state called select uh, where uh, when uh, the user uh, presses the button for the for example cola it will go another to go, go another state and um, if the user wants something else it will go to another state and uh, from there some in some during like uh, from there somehow it will give the user cola and again go to this idle state and so on so similarly and from here uh, the user may have different options uh, to look at another example atm machine so for example uh, initially it is at again idle state so user inserts the card and then the machine asks for pin uh, if the pin code is wrong then it goes back to the previous state if the pin code is if the pin is correct then uh, the atm machine goes to a transaction state and asks the user whether he wants to check the balance or withdraw money or something else so according to their choice for example if the user chooses to check the balance then um, it may ask whether do you need a printout and it will go to another state uh, if yes then it will print uh, so uh, okay um, it will get the print and uh, go to another state so at another state uh, the machine asks the user whether you want to do another transaction or not if they say no then it will go to idle state if they say yes it will go to this state so if from draw state if the user chooses some amount then the machine will go to another state it's called uh, so at this state it will give the cash and if there is not enough money then it will again go to this state uh, maybe uh, giving a message to the user that you don't have enough enough money and if it has enough money then it will give the cash and go to this state and then again ask the user whether it wants to do another transaction or not so this is uh, briefly more or less what is happening uh, behind the ATM machine. Um, okay. Okay, uh, so now let's look at another example which is simple. Uh, so from this one I will go to the definition so it's an example of uh, sliding doors so what happens is that initially uh, the door is closed if it senses someone then it goes to open if it keeps sensing someone then it remains open otherwise it goes to if it doesn't sen sense anyone then it goes to close state uh, so as I said uh, these these are called states of the system these are called the states of the system um, these arrows are called transitions uh, so this initial arrow this this is called initial state of the system and this red or red things are called actions of the system uh, so this is just details you not you i mean uh, you do not need to memorize everything uh, so this is the definition of a transition system so transition system is basically uh, a set of a tuple uh, where you have some states like this, uh, some actions like this, uh, transitions like arrows, and initial state to to denote where the thing starts. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll pause at this slide for thirty seconds and ask if it's clear. You can tell me in chat if it's not. I can repeat it once again. Uh, 
um okay so i'll just continue because yeah okay then i'll just continue um so from this transition systems uh, we are close to automaton now uh, so how do transition systems work so as we saw in the examples um so suppose this is a transition systems with uh, set of states q1 q2 uh, set of actions a and b uh, initial state is only q1 and this is just a formalism to write these arrows uh, so how does it work um, it will read a word uh, of this kind so yeah so it will read uh, the letters one by one and uh, one can think of a red token here so i had an animation but uh, i cannot show the animation here uh, yeah mm, so uh, initially uh, the red token is at the initial state which is q1 then the mm, then the system will read the first letter for example a here will go to uh, so from q1 it says reading a you go to q2 so I mark this Q2 and the red token is now here. So from Q2 reading B, it again comes back to Q1. So I mark Q1 here and red token comes back here. So it goes uh, similarly so on. Uh, you can uh, maybe after the lecture, uh, pause the video and try to see if it uh, checks. And this is called a run. Now what we uh, what we want to do, we want to say whether a word of this kind is good or bad. For example, in the ATM machine, uh, we want to say whether a uh, word or execution is good or bad. So how is that defined? Uh, we define it as def uh, by defining an accepting state. So in this particular example, we say, okay, we say that this Q2 is accepting. And we say this word is accepting if the last state is like in the last position, the token is at the accepting state. So this is basically uh, the definition of automaton. Uh, so this is transition system along with a um, final state or accepting state. So for example, uh, this word is accepting here. Uh, let us look at another example. Uh, we want to construct an uh, automaton which accepts all the words over uh, only actions A, uh, such that the lengths of the words uh, are divisible by three. Um, so actions are only A. That means uh, in all the arrows, we have only level A. Now we want to construct this automaton. I'll directly show the automaton. So this is the automaton. Mm, we have three states. So it starts here. If it reads the first A, it will go to Q2. Reading second A, it will go to Q3. And reading the final A, third A, it will go to Q1. And we say this Q1 is the final state. So uh, after reading A, 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 it goes to final state. That means A, A, A is an accepting word. And it has length three. So now if it reads uh, four A's, it goes to Q2. By reading five A's, it goes to Q3. By reading six A's, it goes to again Q1. This way, it actually models the all the words which have length uh, divisible by three. Uh, can I know is everything going okay? Is it clear? Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, let's look at another example. This is an easy example, uh, which says, uh, construct an automaton which accepts every word, uh, those end with AB. Uh, AB is, uh, so this is uh, the automaton uh, where uh, it starts at Q1 and uh, reading A or B, it first, uh, it stays in the same state. Then at some point it guesses 
uh, that okay uh, now i am at the second last word second last letter and it goes to q2 by reading this a and uh, by reading b i go to q3 uh, so here actually the machine guess the whole world uh, whole word uh, so this guess is called non determinism and yeah a fact is that uh, non determinism and determinism are actually equivalent okay so now i'll uh, okay so now uh, that was the brief introduction about automata with a couple of examples um so now i'll uh, define uh, something called monoid uh, and then i'll show uh, i'll try to give a brief, a brief idea why these two concepts are uh, similar uh, so I am almost uh, half way. Mm, I hope I am not going very fast. Okay. Uh, so uh, to start with some preliminaries, a set is just a collection of objects. I think, uh, yeah, you know this. Uh, for example, here are some example of sets. So this is uh, empty set. First one is empty set. Uh, second is uh, a set with a single element, uh, say x. Uh, third one is um, set of natural numbers, so 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. Uh, fourth one is a set of prime numbers. And a function is a mapping from a set to another. So a function basically, so if we have a set like this, 1, 2, 3, and b, uh, which has a, b, c, d, a function is uh, a mapping that assigns every element from the left set to some element in the right set. So here, uh, f of one is b, f of two is d, f of three is again b. So notice that uh, it's not necessarily be the case that uh, everything is matched in b. This is not not necessarily be the case, and also it may happen that. Uh, or more than one things, more than one things in the left set is mapped to the same element in the right set. Now I'll define semi group. Uh, I I think uh, okay. Uh, depending on the audience, I don't know whether uh, semi group is known to the audience. Okay, a semi group is nothing but uh, a tuple, a tuple of a set and a function so a set s and a function uh, which, which we uh, denote by dot so it is also called a product that's why we use dot so what is this uh, dot is a function from s cross s to s what does this mean so it takes input it takes as input two elements from this set s and it outputs it outputs an element in the s again Okay, fine, but it has to satisfy it to, to be same to be a semi group. Uh, this function has to satisfy these following two conditions. First, if um, if we take an element from this set S X and another element from this set S Y, and if we um, apply this fun this function, or if we take the product, as I said, we will call this dot product. Uh, if we take the product X dot Y then it has to be the case that x dot y is also in this set s and additionally we have associativity so associativity is nothing but if we uh, so uh, the end result would be the same if we uh, do x dot y first then dot z or if we do x dot uh, y dot z just a second Okay, uh, so yeah, this is called a semi group. Mm. So let us look at some examples. So, for example, uh, empty set is so there is nothing in this set. Uh, so, we uh, say this is a semi group, this is just a convention. 
uh, if there is only one uh, element x so we can define this function dot as x dot x is equals to x and then we can say yeah this is a semi group with that product dot uh, here is an interesting example uh, set of all natural numbers if and uh, the function dot is plus so how is this a semi group uh, so you can basically check that if you take any natural number x and any natural number y and x you do x plus y uh, then also x plus y is also an a natural number and uh, it also satisfies the associativity uh, that is x plus y plus z is uh, same as the x plus y plus z so yeah this is basically a standard uh, semi group uh, which is used a lot uh, in theory you can also check that uh, if we take natural numbers with uh, product it's a semi group because if you take the if you take the product of two natural numbers it is again a natural number and uh, it also satisfies uh, associativity uh, if you take the set of integers with a plus it is again a semi group and uh, finally you can also check that uh, if you take um, set of all integers and uh, the function minimum uh, then also it is uh, it satisfies this associativity condition and of course clearly uh, this this is satisfied so this will be a semi group now uh, we want to extend a semi group uh, which is called monoid how is this extended uh, so basically a monoid is nothing but uh, is dot uh, and an extra element one so basically is dot is a semi group and one is called the identity that is uh, for all x uh, one dot x equals to x dot one equals to x so this is the definition of identity if this holds then we call that s comma dot comma one is a monoid uh, so let us look at some examples for example yeah if you have s equals to one uh, then it's a monoid because one into one equals to one and the mm, function product is product uh, yeah so last we saw n comma plus is a semi group if you extend with uh, zero mm, then zero actually acts as an identity because x plus zero is zero plus x is x but if you take out the zero from set of natural numbers that is set of all positive natural numbers then it is a semi group but it is not a monoid any longer because you took out the identity Another example is uh, if you take out the identity, but if you uh, see the if you take the function as product of natural numbers, then it is a monoid because you have the identity one. OK, and uh, yeah, we saw that uh, set of natural numbers with a minimum is a semi group. Now, if you insert something called infinity and if you define the infinity to be your identity, then it will be a uh, semi group because if you take minimum of any x and infinity uh, and infinity of x in, uh, and minimum of infinity comma x that will be basically x so this will also be a uh, semi group yeah for all x minimum of x comma infinity is same as minimum of infinity x is same as x uh, so this will be a monoid uh, but if you don't include the infinity then uh, it won't be a monoid because we won't have any identity so you can basically prove that for so there does not exist such an x which you can you which you can call identity in this uh, z minimum okay so uh, you can also define your own monoid what do you what do i mean so for example you can say okay i uh, just define a set s uh, as 1 comma a comma b comma ab and i say okay uh, i say this is my monoid uh, well you have to be a little bit careful because uh, monoid has to also be a semi group um, so you need to define the products so in semi groups you need to define the, uh, the product x dot y such that that is also in the set so for example uh, if you take the product of a comma b then a b is in the set but if you take b comma a, b into a b a b a is not in the set so you have to define some kind of function some kind of assignment uh, 
that defines your VA and others. So you can say, okay, my BA will be same as AB, my AA will be same as A, and my BB will be same as B. So this is actually a monad. Now one can wonder, okay, what happens if I uh, take the product of more than two elements, for example, ABA, uh, that you can derive actually uh, from whatever you have in this relation, such as if you consider ABB, you can actually uh, do this uh, by associativity, AB into B equals to A into BB, and you know your BB is B, so this is basically AB. Another example would be, if you say want to um, take products of uh, AB and BA, so it will be basically by associativity ABB into A. Uh, so yeah, and uh, ABB is just uh, AB as we saw earlier. So this will be AB into A and by associativity, it is A into BA and your uh, BA is basically AB. So you replace AB and then again associativity uh, you get aa into b and uh, by your rule aa is simply a so you get that this element is same as ab so uh, yeah so um, now let me give an uh, example which is uh, so okay uh, let me ask uh, shall i go ahead Okay. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so now I want to uh, show some correlation between the automata I defined earlier and uh, this structure of monoids. Like these two appear to be very uh, different uh, fields. Uh, how do you even uh, think of uh, collect, uh, correlating them? Well, I did not think of them. It's already there. Um, so before going to that, I'll uh, give another example, which is which will be useful next. Um, so yeah, I name this set B two. Uh, this is the set of all two cross two matrices, uh, which has uh, which have entries either zero or one, and it satisfies the condition that uh, among uh, four entries, it has at most is at most one, one. So how does they look like? Uh, so B2 looks like this, uh, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, and zero, 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 zero. Now one can check, I mean, uh, you can check offline that uh, it is indeed a semi-group because uh, if you take multiplication of two of the matrices here, it will actually be, a two cross two matrix with matrix with zero one entries and at most one one so it actually falls in b2 uh, with uh, yeah the product is basically matrix multiplication i'm talking about here uh, so yeah basically when we uh, don't uh, mention the product it's usual pro is the usual product for example for natural numbers is the product of naturals for matrix multiplication is the, yeah for matrices it's the multiplication of matrix matrices and so on uh, but uh, this itself is not a monoid but uh, if we just include the identity matrix one 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 uh, and we name this b21 well it does not uh, long it uh, does not any longer satisfies this condition that at most one one but uh, you can verify that uh, this set uh, B2 union, this identity element is actually um, a monoid. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is a general comment about semigroups. So this was uh, for particular B2, but uh, you can check that uh, given any semigroup S, if you include uh, an element one, I mean, you call that element one, such that uh, you define this relation that 
1 dot x is same as x dot 1 is same as x that uh, the final product the final uh, yeah product is actually a monoid okay and uh, as a side note i also want to mention this that if you write uh, so yeah this element 0 1 0 0 as a and this element 0 0 1 0 as b and zero element as zero and then you get a b is basically this element and b a is basically this element uh, then you can also write this mono uh, well this uh, semi group as a b a b b a and zero with uh, so again uh, recall that you have to define the uh, products of more than uh, like more than uh, products of the elements which are not defined already here by in the set so you define that uh, a b a is basically a so that you can check actually by uh, doing the matrix multiplication uh, doing the usual matrix multiplication uh, and b a b is b a, b a equals to b b equals to zero so these all hold if you do the matrix multiplication inside b2 so okay uh, now Mm, okay another slide for uh, examples uh, if you so that was for b2 uh, where you have two cross two matrices but you can also have n cross uh, n square matrices with same criteria and you can show that this bn is also a semi group with matrix multiplication and if you extend this bn with a with an identity then it will be a monoid um Second example would be a set of matrices of the form A, B, 0, 1. So this A, B can be any number. And third example would be if S is a semigroup, then uh, the set of all subsets of S. Uh, so this is basically uh, the power set uh, is also a semigroup where you define the product as uh, the set of the set of products of individual elements in those sets. Uh, okay, this might be, and this might look a bit complicated, but I don't want to continue with that complicated examples. Now, which I want, what I want to do is the um, interesting part, but I'll only give a flavor uh, in this talk. Uh, so yeah, some kind, so uh, these two are actually uh, related models. So one can transform an automaton to a monoid and vice versa. Okay. Mm, so let's first look at this reaction first. If you have a finite monoid, so I highlighted this finite, then you can have a transition system. How so? Okay. So given a monoid uh, S dot and one uh, over alphabet A, I did not say what an alphabet is, uh, but I'll, say now uh, so for example recall this uh, alternative form of b2 so here we had one a b a b b a and zero so i call i call alphabet a is the letters which are used here so for example here a is uh, a b zero and one one will also be there so there is a typo uh, so our alphabet in this example is a b zero comma one so alphabets are just the letters, uh, distinguished letters, those are used in the monoid. So from the monoid, I draw, I can draw a transition system. I can construct a transition system by defining uh, this relation. So from a state S, uh, okay. So the state of, uh, set of states of the transition system will be the set S from the monoid. My initial state will be the same as the uh, identity in the monoid. And this A would be same as this A. Which is in, important now is that to, how to define these transition relations or the arrows. So I say that uh, from any set S, uh, from any state S, by reading a letter A in the alphabet capital A, I will go to uh, S dot A. Now, in monoid, S dot A is also uh, an element in uh, this uh, same set capital S. So this will also again be a same, uh, again be an element in the same set capital S. 
So let me show you through an example. Uh, Yeah, so for example, in this example, uh, B21 is 1A, B, A, B, B, A, 0. So in the transition system, I have uh, states from this set. So that is 1, A, B, A, B, B, A, 0. So I have all six of them. Initial state is this one, which I did not depict here, but this is the initial state 1. Now I will show you the transitions. So I said uh, from a state S, if you read A, then you go to S dot A. So from 1, if you read A, then you go to 1 dot A. And 1 dot A is A. From 1, if you read B, you go to 1 dot B and 1 dot B is B. So now you get this transition relations from A, you go to AB, from B, you go to BA. Uh, so from A, by reading B, you go to AB, and by reading A, recall that you had this relation, A, A equals to zero. So you go to zero. Similarly, from B, you go to zero reading B, or go to A reading A. Okay, and yeah, you can, you can, uh, construct the whole transition system this way. So actually, uh, in mathematical term, this is called Kelly graphs. And to see, this is and this is a transition system. And then in this transition system, we can define some sort of uh, acceptance condition to make it, uh, to define a, an automaton out of it. So this is the main concept behind this uh, transition. Uh, from, from monoid to trans uh, to a transition system on an automaton. Now let me show the other direction, which is bit involved, uh, but not very involved. So for example, we have this transition system. So how do we construct the mo construct a monoid? Uh, we construct a monoid uh, for in the following way. Mm. We draw a n cross n matrix uh, mu of u corresponding to every word u. So wh what is n? n is the number of states. For example, here we have two states. So our matrix will be two cross two matrix. So what do we mean by uh, this uh, mu of u? So for example, well, uh, and it, it has this property that it will have zero one entries. And it is defined in the following way. Uh, P comma q -th entry of mu u will be one if there is a path from p to q reading this word u and if there is no path then we will say this is zero so here is an example mu of a so let's look at this example uh, from state one so uh, this uh, there are four coordinates P comma Q entry is like this. So first entry is one comma one. This is uh, one comma two. This is two comma one. This is two comma two. So let's look at the one comma one entry. Um, so what does this say? If there is a path from state one to state one reading A, is there a path? Yes. So from one reading A, there is a path to one. That's why I write one here. But uh, from two, reading an A, there is no path uh, to one, uh, to this state one. That's why this entry is zero. Well, uh, maybe this one, two are confusing, I agree now. Uh, yeah, I should have written those in P1, P2. Okay, mm, so if we uh, complete this example then mu of b would be 0, 0, 1, 1 because uh, from this first state uh, reading a b it does not loop in the first state that's why this first entry is zero whereas uh, from the second state reading a b it can go to the first state so this that's why 2 comma 1 the entry is 1 uh, and so on. Uh, so mu of a comma a would be one one zero one, which is the same as mu comma a. So then I forgot the forget this uh, matrix. I just 
remember this relation and mu of ab is the identity and you can see that mu of ba would be same as mu of bb equals to mu of b yeah and yeah we also have to include something special uh, so epsilon is the empty string empty string is basically if you read nothing so this is basically the i don't know what is it called uh, okay uh, so this is basically uh, okay diagonal matrix right this will be the diagonal matrix and then uh, we define this as mu of sigma star so sigma star is basically set of all words so in this example we say that okay mu of sigma star is this set and uh, we can show that uh, this is actually a semi group and in fact uh, this will be a monoid and this will be a finite monoid and this can be computed in finite time so uh, initially it may look like that okay we have to check it for every word u but uh, after some time we get repetitions and we can deduce this kind of relation so this is actually can be computed in finite time and uh, yeah if two transition systems are equivalent i did not define what is equivalent but yeah if those are equivalent then the corresponding monoids will also be equivalent up to isomorphisms up to isomorphism yeah and vice versa okay yeah so i am at the end of my talk yeah i think i am on time um yeah so i have defined a transition system and uh, monoids uh, and i have tried to give a brief idea how they are equivalent uh, yes so So some initial contents uh, of the um, verification slides are taken from Sivatsan's slides. Uh, Sivatsan is from CMI. And uh, yeah, for uh, more information on automata theory, you can look, uh, two look at two popular books, uh, famous books, one by Dexter Cosen and another is by Michael Sipser. And uh, the algebraic part was, mostly taken in this slide from the book of uh, jean eric Pa and uh, also well, from Wikipedia. And yeah, some, some slides were taken from, so there are also online courses you can look at uh, by Madhavan, uh, who is now the director of CMI and uh, Narayan Kumar, which is also at CMI. And he is also, um, I think he's, Okay, never mind. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask. I can try to answer. Okay, then uh, I'll stop here and go to the more session. Um, uh, no, uh, but uh, so there, uh, 
there is a possibility of uh, having a research track if you are interested uh, otherwise i don't think i'll be having any online session like this anymore on this topic well um okay then uh, you can contact me or uh, shoran or whoever is in charge um, i think uh, yeah shoran is in charge so in that case do you know do you want to know anything in particular okay you can okay you can uh, directly contact shoran okay then uh, have a good evening and maybe see you in some another session if i give any so thank you for listening.